Hi everyone, my name is Kaylee Deinzer and I'm a graduate student at LSU in the horticulture department. And we are standing here under a hemp hoop house at the Central Research Station in Baton Rouge. So the whole goal of my research is to create a best management practice guide for farmers and how to grow field grown hemp for essential oils. So last year was our first ever growing season in Louisiana and I grew out in the fields a little bit beyond this camera. This year, I also grew out in the fields, however, I'm moving my study under this hoop house and we're also repeating it in the greenhouse as well to see what differences we can find in um, how hip responds in Louisiana's climate. So some of the things I'm looking at with this study is in-row plant spacings, planting dates, as well as conducting a variety trial to see which genetics perform best in our climate. So when we look at um, planting dates, you know, in Louisiana, we're closer to the equator. We get a lot less um, day length than other states do up north. And a lot of plants are day length sensitive. So that's where we need supplemental lighting to come in um, to really increase this photo period to keep it vegetated before you want it to turn to flower. Um, looking at in-row plant spacing, I looked at three, four, and five foot spaces between the plants. And as you can see here under the hoop house, I'm actually now planting with just two foot between the plants. Because in Louisiana, we're really not finding our plants get that big, at least in the field, compared to what you might see in a more controlled environment such as a greenhouse. So really wanting to maximize your spacing um, or maximize your acreage, plant on a more denser scale, and that way you can optimize your yields um, come harvest time. So a crucial component of hemp production is photoperiod. So hemp is a photosensitive plant, meaning that it requires over 14 hours of day length to remain vegetative before you turn to reproductive growth for flower production. Here in Louisiana, we really don't get adequate amount of day length, so you have to bring in supplemental lighting or to be able to extend your day length um, to keep them vegetative. So here in this field, I have um, lights that are brought in, they're connected by extension cords, and they're on 16, 16 hours actually and off for eight hours. Now, although many people consider this plant to grow like a weed, it actually cannot outcompete weeds. So weed control is a very important protocol to follow in order to not have your plants be grown out by weeds and other grasses and nut sedge and so on. So there's two main um, practices you can follow, one being plastic mulch. And so we actually have this out in the field and we use the white plastic mulch because this also reduces your soil surface temperature because we get so hot in Louisiana in the late summertime. So that's a good weed prevention barrier as well as a pre-emergent herbicide. So if you look at this hoop house, we do not have plastic mulch and there are nearly zero weeds, which is incredible. So in Louisiana, we really don't have many labeled herbicides, fungicides, or insecticides. What there is labeled are mostly our organic products such as um, neem oil, um, horticultural soaps, and products such as that, which usually aren't that efficacious in terms of insect control. So really this also highlights like the emphasis of using good cultural practices such as adequate spacing between your plants to have airflow to reduce pest pressure, also drip irrigation to reduce the water on your leaves, once again maybe reducing those pathogen incidence levels, and so on. Here at LSU we have a research permit so we're able to use different products that producers might not be able to. For example, this pre-emergent that we sprayed was dual magnum, um, so very effective but might not be labeled yet for the next few years. So under this hoop house, we have six different varieties of hemp growing. In each row, there is a different variety. Additionally, this front half of the hoop house was planted one month earlier than this back half. So as you can see, the plants behind me and all over here are much larger than the plants um, that were planted one month later. So hemp is a relatively fast growing plant, um, but also you can see there's a lot of phenotypic variability. So this is one variety right here in this row. As you can see, this plant is very tall versus this, these are very small. And they're all having the same growth, um, growth conditions. Everything's the same, but they look like two different plants. And that's just the nature of hemp, um, especially when you grow from seed. So all of these varieties were actually grown from seed in the greenhouse. However, these front two rows that you might be able to see in the front, those were actually grown from clones or from cuttings. So another very important factor we have yet to discuss is cannabinoids. So we're doing some, a few various research projects with cannabinoid production because as farmers we want to remain compliant and there has been some studies that show that cannabinoid development changes throughout time. So upon anthesis, which is the beginning, which is the um, flowering portion of a plant's life cycle, 
we will begin to sample for cannabinoids every single week to be able to trend and tr or to be able to track trends of cannabinoid development. Some things that people have shown before is that cannabinoids can increase one week and then the next week they'll start to dip and then the next week they'll grow again. So if we can follow these trends, know perhaps when to start harvesting or when to harvest certain portions of the plant if there's a difference in cannabinoid development. So that leads me to another portion of um, studying that we're looking at is cannabinoid development throughout the plant. So not only will we be sampling um, weekly, but also we'll be dividing one plant into three samples. So we'll have like the top, middle, and bottom portion of the plant separated to see if there's a difference in development throughout plant location. This can affect us when we think about LDAF, Louisiana State Regulatory Agency, and when they come and sample to make sure farmers are remaining compliant. For example, if the top portion of the plant um, matures quickly or more readily than the bottom, then farmers can know, well, we should harvest that first rather than the lower portion. That way we can harvest our whole plant with, while remaining compliant and not losing any of our yields.